My name is Mitchell Pearson and welcome to another video on Azure Data Factory. Today I want to take a look at working with variables within Azure Data Factory. You are probably familiar already with parameters. Parameters are very common from an administrative perspective. Being able to pass parameters in during execution time or for some third party API call and it makes administration and management very, very easy. Variables are similar to parameters, but they're able to change their value and be modified during an execution and as conditions change. So usually, typically we're going to see these inside of things like an iteration type loop, an until loop or a for each loop. That's what we're going to be using this in today. And so we're going to use an until loop and we're going to keep checking to see if a file exists until the file does exist. And then we can do some other stuff, but we're going to be able to check that out by using variables. So let's take a look at what that would look like. The first thing that I want to do, I've created a new pipeline here. I just gave it a very generic name and then I want to create a couple of variables. So you define these variables right here at the pipeline scope and I'm going to create three variables. So I'll go ahead and hit this three times and we'll create one called, let's see, file exist. We're going to give that a value of Boolean and then I'll give it a default value of false and I'll create another one here and we will call this one int counter. You'll notice there is no value for integer. So we're just going to stick with string for this. And then I'm going to create one called int temp counter. And I'll put a string for that as well. And I'm going to explain why we need two separate counters here for this uh, or two separate variables when we get there in just a moment. All right, so let's set this up very quickly here. The first thing that I want to do is we are going to add in an until condition and until activity. Under settings, we're going to give this a basic expression here. And so as long as this expression evaluates to false, the until loop will continue to loop. So it will loop, it'll perform every activity within the loop, it'll check the expression. If the expression is still false, then it will loop again. We'll come back and set this up here in just a moment. And then under activities, we can start adding activities into the until loop. So the first activity I want to add is going to be the metadata activity. Under general, I'll bring that in. I'm going to quickly set this up to point to our data source. The data source that I'm going to connect to is going to be a blob storage account. There we go, Azure blob storage. And notice that I'm pointing to a file called sales file four. This file does not exist. That's exactly the behavior that I want. And then I want to check what are we, what metadata information are we looking for? I'm going to be looking for, we need to expand this a little bit. I'm going to be looking to see if that file exists. So I'm going to go ahead and select from the drop down here exist. All right. And that's it. There's some other metadata properties, but this is the only one that I care about for this demo. And then if the value does exist or does not exist, I want to update our variable. So over here under the general property pane, I'm going to bring in the set variable activity. I'll go ahead and set these two up. And then I'm going to update our file exist variable. And the way we do that is under variables. I'll tell it that the variable that I want to set is going to be called file exist. And the value of that is going to be the output of the metadata activity. So I'll click on dynamic content and down here at the very, very end, all of your activity outputs can be found here. We're going to grab get metadata activity. And then we need to add on to the end, the actual output property that we want because the get metadata activity is going to have multiple outputs. But the one that we want is going to be get metadata one dot output dot exist. So we'll go ahead and click finish. And now we've done that. The final thing that I want to do before we test this out is I want to go ahead and give this a wait condition. All right. And then I'm just going to tell it here that I want to wait for, let's say three seconds. So not a very long amount of time. Obviously, if you were running this in production, you'd probably want to wait a little bit longer than three seconds, maybe run this for, you know, wait five sec five minutes and then check again, see if the file exists, wait five minutes, check again. But what will happen is this will run very quickly. This will run very quickly. This will pause and wait for three seconds. And then 
the until loop is going to then check to see if the file has, it's going to check to see if the file, if the parameter rather, right here in the expression, evaluates to false or true. If it evaluates to true, then the until loop ends and whatever activities follow will be executed. If it evaluates to false, then we go through this process again. We go back through, we run everything again, check the expression on the until loop. If it evaluates to false, we go through that process again. And so what I wanna do is in the expression, we need to evaluate an expression that either evaluates to true or false. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that variable. So I'm gonna reference the variable that we're updating and click finish. Remember we gave it a default value of false and then over here, we'll update that variable based on whether that file exists or not. All right, before we do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and publish. All right, let's go ahead and run this pipeline and see what those results are. And one thing to keep in mind is that we could get into a very nasty infinite loop type scenario where this can loop and loop and loop and never stop because we have no condition that ever evaluates to true. So what if this kicks off, the file doesn't exist, the file never exists, it never gets created, and we have no kind of process or threshold in there that stops it after a certain number of iterations, right? And so if we come down here to the bottom and we take a look at the outputs and the debugging, we will see that it ran one time and that was it. So clearly I forgot to set something up Let's go back over to our get metadata activity. We're passing in a value for the file name, a value of sales final four. So we'll go over here and check out that data set and make sure that we're mapping that. And we are not. So I have a parameter in my data set called file name. And for some reason I did not map it here. So it is, there we go, let's zoom out. We'll put that right there, click finish. And now when we run this again, it'll now check based on that. Once again, I'm going to publish. All right, so publishing has completed. We're gonna go ahead and run this again. That's my one error that I'm allowed per YouTube video. And what we'll see this time is that it's not going to complete right away. We're going to see the until loop. It's gonna check, it's gonna evaluate to false. It's gonna run everything inside the until loop. It's gonna wait for three seconds, and then it's going to do that process again. And then it's going to do that process again and again and again until either A, I upload a sales file for over here into this directory, or until I manually come in here and I turn this off, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel. All right, so it finally canceled. And the reason we did that, I actually canceled it, ran again, canceled it again. Uh, so I'll edit all that out. But what I'm trying to do here is just show you that this thing will run forever and ever unless we manually stop it if that file never gets loaded. And so we need to put in some kind of mechanism that'll help us to stop this until loop and make sure that it doesn't run forever and ever. And so my solution to that might be, well, we only want it to run for five iterations. And then maybe after five iterations, we'll then come over here and we'll kick off some kind of web activity that calls a logic app and sends an email, right? We do something along those lines and says, look, the file doesn't exist. It never got processed. Please contact this person. Or we email that person directly. So the way I'm gonna set this up is I'm gonna bring in two set variable operations here, two set variable activities and I'll set these up and configure these very quickly. Now, I obviously go through the setup and development operations here quickly because it's YouTube, you can pause it, uh, you can slow me down, you can speed me up. So I go through these as quickly as I can, and that way it's going to not take as much of your time. So with this set variable right here, I'm going to set the value of int temp counter. Now let's, let's take a look at what would happen if we just try to set the value of int counter. So I'm gonna say I wanna set the value of int counter, and then we're going to use some kind of expression to set that value. Now, if I come in here and do something like at add, which is a mathematical function, you can find all of your functions down here. But if I type in add, and then I pass in the variable int counter, and I put in a comma here, and then a one, you'll notice we get an error message immediately. It says that, you can't use a self-referencing variable. I can't take the current value of int counter and add one to it. 
That is why in this demo, I created two variables, one called int counter and then one called int temp counter. So what I'll do is I am going to go ahead and cancel out of here real quick. We're going to tell it that instead we want to update int temporary counter. And then we're going to set up that value by saying, all right, now I want to do at add. We're going to get another error message here and we'll grab that variable right there, int counter. All right. Now the problem is that remember when we created variables, you can't define the variable when you originally create it as an integer value. And we're getting a warning saying you cannot add a string value with an integer value. So I'm going to use a function here that turns that variable into an integer. All right. So this now works. I'm adding an integer counter because we converted it to an integer to the value of one. However, we're now getting a warning message that says, well, you can't load the result of this value. You're not able to load that into the actual variable because the variable expects a string and you're about to pass in an integer value. So now what do we do? Well, the next thing we can do is we can essentially under our conversion functions, we can now convert this back to a string now that we've converted it. So I'll go ahead and convert this back to a string. And then once I'm done, I'll come down here and click finish. And so what we've done is we said, okay, set the temporary counter equal to whatever the current integer counter is, add one to it. And then when I get back over here, now we can set the value of the integer counter equal to the value of the temporary counter. So I know it's a little bit confusing because there's like the circular logic that I'm using for this example, but ultimately what happens here is because you can't use a self-referencing variable like you can in a lot of other programming languages, you have to create another variable. You update it from the current value, add one, and then you update the regular one from the temporary. So there's like this circular logic which works, but we can't do the self-referencing. So that's what we're gonna do here. Now, what I'm going to do is now that this counter is going to count by one for every iteration, we can now use that in our Boolean expression for the until loop to determine when it stops and when it starts. So we'll go ahead and take a step back here, go back until the until activity, and we're going to modify and adjust this expression right here. And this expression is ultimately going to become much more robust because we're going to have to use some conditional logic here. So the first condition, I'm going to say if either of these two conditions evaluate to true, then stop the for each loop. So the first one is going to be if the variable exists, file exists, if that evaluates to true, stop the loop or right. So we're going to use an or function here. So or, and then we're going to put a comma and we're going to add our second condition. And the second condition is going to be under conditionals. It's going to be greater or equal to, and I'll show you what that one looks like here. Logical functions. There we go. Greater or equals. And so we should be able to just click that actually and just add it right there. There you go. Greater or equals. And we're going to say if, and I'm going to convert it to an integer again. I should do all of this. I'm zoomed in, so I'm not doing it the easy way here. I'm typing everything in, but I'm going to go ahead and go grab the variable from down here. So if the counter is greater than or equal to five, so we put, we need two closing parentheses, one for the integer conversion, one for the variable itself. Then we're going to do a comma for the greater or equal to, and we're going to say if it's greater than or equal to five, then we close that out. Then we need another closing parenthesis for the or statement. All right. So we've built this out and what we're saying, the or function is going to return true. If either one of these two are true in this situation, you can see right here it returns true. If either of the parameters are true. So both arguments must be Boolean values. Both of these are Boolean values. So now we will click finish and we've made this much more robust. Either this is going to run until the file exists or it's going to run until we've, the iteration has ran five times. And as soon as it's ran five times or maybe six based on my logic, it'll then stop the until loop and it'll move on to the next activity. 
typically speaking, we would do something like send an email or update, you know, update a table, an audit table, or we'd have a data flow that we're calling that then processes the file because it now exists. So we'll put a wait activity in here just to see what happens. And then let's go ahead and kick this off. We're going to go ahead and debug it. This is going to be the moment of truth. We'll let this run. Um, as mentioned before, the file doesn't exist. So what we're hoping is that those additional variables that we've added in here, ultimately the int counter variable, as it increments, it'll get to five and it'll stop. So let's look at the output. We can actually see the values of this here. So it's running, it's running. Set variable three, we can see what the input coming in is. It's three. And then the output of set variable three is still three. So it's been incremented up. And then I'm gonna refresh this again. And we'll take a look at three again. Three is set to five. We'll refresh it again. And it's now running. So the variable, probably got all the way up to six, right? No, it got to five, yes. So greater, oh, equal to, that's right, we did greater or equal to. And so what happens here is it's no longer gonna infinitely run forever because what we've done is, you know, there's essentially the until loop ran five times. It ran, ran everything inside of it, it waited, it ran again, ran everything inside of it, it waited, ran again, wait, run again, wait, and we incremented up that variable. So we have some logic here, kind of like a, you know, a condition that's essentially going to protect us from a really bad situation of this infinite run, this infinite loop. We did that by just building in a little bit more condition using the expression language and using variables. So in this video, we took a look at variables. A lot of times you're going to be using them inside of something like an until loop where you're iterating over something and you need that value to change based on what's happening within that iteration. In this situation, we used it within an until iteration activity and we used it to say look we don't want that want this to run infinitely so once it hits this threshold we're going to use this as a mechanism to stop this and continue down the pipeline in this scenario we would have moved on and, and, and to be honest with you I probably would have done something like some kind of if condition here right I'd have an if condition that we bring in some kind of if condition like this and then I'd do an expression in here. And if this stopped and the file never existed, then I'd send an email. If the file did exist and it stopped, then we'd have it going down another pipeline, right? If it's, if it's true, the file existed, then go process the file. If it's false, the file did not exist, then send an email. So this gets to be very robust. And we're once again, we're leveraging those variables to continue building out that logic within our pipeline. All right. That's the end of another video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.